Now, typically, when an NFL team decides it's time to change a head coach, there are reasons for that. Usually, you've lost a lot of games, and it's time for a change. There's a hope that a new coach would bring new vision, new plans, new ideas, and new life into the organization. When you fire your old head coach, you do it sometimes maybe because that coach has lost the locker room. He does not have the respect of the players. The players aren't fighting. They're not working hard. They're not playing hard on the field. Sometimes you fire a coach because not just that they're losing games or the players have zoned out and thinking about going fishing already, and it's only October. Sometimes you fire him because the fans aren't showing up. And at the end of the day, if you're an NFL owner, you can't sit there and have half empty or more stadiums for your seven or eight home games every year because that's going to really significantly impact your bottom line. It's just not a good look. It's not a good way to you know, really engage the community into joining with you. Now, you want to fire a coach to bring in somebody different, somebody fresh, somebody that hopefully will be better, that will do things a new way, a different way, somebody that could come in and change the culture of the team and, in some cases, the organization as a whole. You're looking for leadership. You're looking for somebody who has a commitment to success, somebody that hopefully knows what they're doing, somebody that comes from a background where they've been around winning. Because sometimes it can be about that environment, and winning breeds winning. So if you bring in a winner, your hope being, in theory, that he would help make your organization a winner too. That's what NFL organizations typically do. But apparently not the Jacksonville Jaguars. Apparently not. Now, did the Jacksonville Jaguars realize that the ultimate goal of the program is to not get a top five pick in the draft every year. It's to make the playoffs and potentially go to the Super Bowl and hopefully someday hoist a Lombardi trophy. That's what you're in the business for. That's what you're supposed to be aiming for. That's what you should be shooting for. Not sitting there and continuing your perpetual cycle of suck that sucks the entire vortex of the organization and the fan base into it. You want to become a playoff team, a consistent playoff team that has championship aspirations. Again, that's what smart, intelligent, good organizations would want. But apparently not the Jacksonville Jaguars. Apparently there's something to it for the Jaguars organization where they like being bad. They like being one of the worst run organizations in the NFL and frankly North American professional sports now. They like to suck. They'd rather be relevant at the end of April for the NFL draft than they would be in January and February when the playoffs and ultimately the Super Bowl happen. Why get better? Because change is strange, right? Why not do the same type of stupid fucking things that keep you in the same position because at least you're accustomed to it. At least you know what that feels like. Unbelievable. So let me get this straight. The Jacksonville Jaguars have hired to be their next head coach, Doug Marone. Doug Marone. Let me repeat this. Doug Marone. The hell are the Jaguars doing? So let me get this straight. The same Doug Marone that had a previous head coaching stop in Buffalo where in two years he had one winning season, still failed to make the playoffs in either of those two seasons, then after 2014 overplayed his hand and so intelligently decided to walk out on his freaking team because he just assumed somebody was going to back up the Brinks truck and give him another head coaching job, and ultimately they didn't, so of all places he ended up in Jacksonville. That's the Doug Marone that was just given the head coaching job, that Doug Marone. So besides the football stuff, you just have to question his intelligence. He quit a situation where he was this close to the playoffs because he thought he could get another head coaching gig. Yeah, I guess he did, ultimately. It only took him two years later, and he stepped into an even worse situation. Doug Marone, who you brought in to be your assistant head coach and your offensive line coach. Now, typically to me, to me, when you have a team that has some type of aspirations for doing more and doing better, in particular in a crappy division like the AFC South, 
And then that team underperformed significantly, first in 2015, but especially here in 2016. You want a clean house. You want to get rid of anybody and everybody in a leadership position as much as you possibly can that was involved with that suck. But apparently not the Jacksonville Jaguars staying true and blue to corporate America and its business philosophies. You reward mediocrity, or in this case, shittiness. You promote your assistant head coach. Ooh, the team played a little bit better under um, under the interim label the last couple of games of the season. Who gives a shit? He was a part of the problem. The group that he was in charge of, the offensive line in Jacksonville, stinks. And part of the reason you bring in a guy like Doug Marone, who had been an NFL head coach, is so that way he could work with that offensive line, help better protect Blake Bortles by making sure that they can actually run block, that they can actually pass protect, and maybe trying to finally get something out of that bust of a second overall pick from 2013, Luke Jokel. But of course, Doug Marone couldn't do that. Why? Because Doug Marone sucks. This is the guy that the Jacksonville Jaguars have decided is going to be their next head coach. Because he showed you a little bit of a flash when he was given the interim label after Bradley been fired? God only knows how much he was undercutting Bradley behind the scenes. Look, Shy Khan, I know where we're going, and I see what's happening. But if I was in charge, Gus Bradley wouldn't be here. And David Caldwell, I'd do this, and I'd do that. And I'd be so much better. And it could be so much better. And I, and only I, know the way. That's exactly what this shit reeks of. Fucking Doug Marone. No playoff success as a head coach. No success as their offensive line coach. You had the chance to last two years to be familiar with him and work with him. And he is a major contributing factor to where the Jaguars find themselves. Oh, what a surprise in the top 10, in the top five of the NFL draft again this year. Again, the purpose of making a change is to get better. The purpose of making a change when you're an organization as crappy as the Jacksonville Jaguars is to sit there and get in a fresh perspective, fresh blood, new life, and most importantly of all, a new direction. And Doug Marone accomplishes none of that. And even when you look at the staffs that he's accumulated, look at the one guy he had in Buffalo that got his own head coaching job. It was Mike Patton. He lasted two years at Cleveland because he sucked. He sucked. So this is the knucklehead that you want not only in charge of your roster, but you want him in charge of assembling your next coaching staff. This is beyond ridiculous. It would be one thing if the Jaguars had a top three offensive line unit in the National Football League, and they opened up gaping holes in the running game, and they gave Blake Bortles five seconds in the pocket every single time or close to it. Then you could sit there and say, okay, while the staff as a whole may suck and the performance of the team as a whole sucks, this particular unit is incredibly strong. Henceforth, as a result, we'd like to keep this guy around because we don't have to worry about that. And maybe that could spread to other areas of the team. I go back to the Bears when they fired Neil Armstrong and they ultimately hired Mike Ditka. The player, the defensive players wrote a note to owner George Hallis uh, campaigning and lobbying for Buddy Ryan to keep his job as defensive coordinator. You know, Buddy wasn't the problem. So it made sense to keep a Buddy Ryan. In this case, it makes absolutely no sense to hire a Doug Marone. It's one thing if you actually go through the interviewing process and you interview a lot of these different guys that are out there on the market and you determine, hey, maybe we really don't like what's out there. We'll give Marone a year. But that's not how this went. It's like you hire Tom Coughlin to be an executive, which is one thing in and of itself. Then you just decided, hey, we really don't want to search. We really don't want to interview anybody. We're just going to promote Doug Marone. Doug Marone! It was one thing when Tennessee did this this past offseason with Mike Malarkey, because at least you could say with their top pick, Marcus Mariota, being a young quarterback, having one year in that system, you didn't want to go and totally upchuck the system that you were in. You wanted to keep some type of stability and continuity there. But frankly, for Blake Bortles, he's had three years, and there's been no progression. There's been no growth. And why the fuck would you want anybody in this situation over the past couple of years involved in the future of this organization? 
He couldn't get the offensive line right. So you expect him to get the entire freaking Jaguars team right? You expect him to turn Blake Bortles around and help him not suck? My God, that's probably going to take a miracle worker. I don't know if Bill Walsh could come back from the dead and save this bum's career. Doug Marone! All these hot coordinators out there. All these guys, maybe head coaches at the college level. There's all these different areas and paths and avenues you could go down. And you go for your interim head coach, your assistant head coach from a failed regime, the offensive line coach of a failed offensive line from a failed regime, and you want him in charge of the entire operation? Why the fuck would you want anything to do with Marone anyways? He already quit on one team after two seasons. Who's the hell to say he's not going to quit on you in a year or two down the road if things get tough or there's a little bit of animus or a little bit of friction between him and the general manager, David Caldwell? I mean, this is arrogance to the utmost. This is basically saying the roster is clearly not the problem. David Caldwell's done a magnificent job, even though he took Blake Bortles with a third overall pick in 2014. This is just basically saying we need some type of yes man. We need somebody that makes us feel good about ourselves. Somebody that makes it easy for us. And it's all a bunch of bullshit. And this is why the Jaguars have become one of the laughing stocks of the league. Instead of finding somebody that can really change the culture of your organization, instead of finding somebody who's actually experienced success as an NFL head coach or at least as an NFL coordinator in recent times, you go for Doug Marone, who couldn't even get the shit right on your team. On your team! What in the bluest of blue fucks are you doing, Jacksonville? Holy Christ! Doug Marone! Doug Marone! And you think that this is the path to success? Ding dong, dumb dicks! I'm not buying this shit, and I'm sure a lot of Jaguar fans aren't either. You're going to sit there and have a last place schedule in 2017. You're going to sit there and get caught up in the kumbaya of all this fucking crap. He's still playing a crappy division. And you're going to be like, ooh, we're better. We're improving on Marone. Well, that's fool's gold if I've ever fucking heard it. And even with that case, Marone left a job where they were this close to the playoffs to become a coordinator somewhere else and not even a coordinator, a positional coach for two years where they're even farther removed from the playoffs. And I assure you and promise you of this, the Buffalo Bills are a hell of a lot closer where they're at now to being a 9 or 10 win team and a playoff team than the Jacksonville Jaguars are to even being a 7 win team, let alone the type of team that could maybe win 9 or 10 games and actually compete in the AFC South and fucking win that crappy division. Unbelievable. You expect somebody like Doug Marone, to make Blake Bortles that much better. is basically what this is telling me. It's an organization not wanting to admit that they fucked up. It's an organization basically not wanting to admit just how bad they were in terms of their talent evaluation at the quarterback position. And now they think they've got a head coach that can fix it. Oh my Christ almighty. If you're a Jaguars fan, why would you even bother anymore? And as much crap as I give the Browns and talk about them being the skin marks of the league, because at the end of the day, they still are. The Jacksonville Jaguars are nipping on their heels. There's not that much difference. And there's not nearly as much distance as people like to make it out to be. This is supposed to be a talented team, and all they did was regress in 2016. So yes, you get rid of the head coach, and you get rid of everybody who's fucking involved in the situation. You bring in fresh blood to get a new direction, a new idea, a new path, a new vision. And instead, they basically went with the same old shit. If that was the case, why the fuck did you fire Gus Bradley to begin with? Unbelievable. The Jacksonville Jaguars are run by a bunch of clowns. And not the dudes that are sitting there trying to get themselves trending in the creepy way that you could kind of see why they do it. These are the creepy kidnap you, throw you in the basement, and bury your body there after they butt-fucked you multiple times type of clowns. Doug Marone. The hell are the Jaguars doing?